Welcome back everybody. This is me, I'm Miss McCarthy, and you are watching another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA, the fourth grade edition. Today's standard that we will be working on is maths.4.nf, stands for fractions, 1.1. Lesson 13, equivalent fractions is what we are focusing on today. So let's go, let me teach ya. Um, <clears throat> okay, write a fraction that is equivalent to two thirds. Equivalent is a fancy word for equal to. Okay, that equals two thirds. The way that we do that, two thirds, you multiply by a fraction that is equivalent or equal to one. So if I multiply this by two, two, two on the denominator, oh, I'm going crazy today. Two in the numerator, two in the denominator, two over two equals one. So that's a fraction equal to one. Now when I do this and multiply across, I will get four, six. That is a fraction that is equal to one. So I'm gonna put four, sixths in my box. Let me show you one other one. Two thirds. Let's multiply by a fraction yeah. that is equivalent to one. So let's do three thirds this time because three divided by three is one. That would be two times three is six. Three times three is nine. So six ninths would also be an answer. I'm only putting one though into my box. Notice my work was away from the box. Gail tried to find an equivalent frac a fraction equivalent to 3 eighths. Her work is shown. So she wrote that 3 eighths equals, I'm just taking this and I'm making it bigger for you, equals 3 eighths and then she multiplied by 1 half to get 3 sixteenths. So she's claiming that 3 sixteenths is equivalent to 3 eighths but it's not, we need to find her error. So which statement describes Gail's error? Okay, let's look at it and then we'll try to find an answer that makes sense. So she took three eighths and then she multiplied by one half. In the previous problem, example two, we said that we have to multiply by a fraction that is equal to one. One, so in other words, same number in the numerator, same number in the denominator. One half is not equal to one. Half of a sandwich is not the same as a whole sandwich. Half of a chocolate bar is not the same as a whole chocolate bar. You need a fraction equal to one. So what she should have done is multiplied by a fraction like this, because that is equivalent to one. Two divided by two is one which would have given her a completely different answer because three times two equals six, eight times two equals 16. That would be a fraction equivalent to three eighths. Okay, so which statement describes Gail's error? <clears throat> she should have divided by two. But we do any division here? No, nope, we did not. She did not multiply three eighths by a fraction equal to one. Ding, ding, ding. She didn't do that, that's what messed her up. So I'm gonna put a question mark there, but I'm gonna check the rest just to make sure. It is impossible to find a fraction equivalent to 3 eighths. It was not impossible. We found it, it was possible. 6 sixteenths, we can eliminate that one. She incorrectly multiplied 3 eighths and 1 half. Three times one is three, Eight times two is 16. No, she multiplied correctly, so that is not a correct answer. So B is our answer. Three. Sophia modeled a fraction by shading parts of the circle as shown. Here is Sophia's model. She is shaded in, if you can't tell, she shaded in three, one, two, three, out of four total, three fourths. Select the fractions, I'm sorry, select sections to model a fraction equivalent to Sophia's 
fraction. So if you were selecting, it would this would be more on a computer-based test. But what we're going to do is instead of selecting, we're going to shade. We're going to represent our selections by shading. So this kind of looks like, I'm kind of seeing fourths here. So if I shade in that, it kind of looks like this. And if I shade in this part, it kind of looks like that. And then, ah! Oh, that looks great, they look equal, they look equivalent. And just to make sure, this would be six shaded out of eight, three fourths, six eighths. Let's use cross multiplication to check. Shoot your arrow up four times 24, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> four times six equals 24. Eight times three equals 24. So yes, 24 equals 24. That's right. Example four, which fractions are equivalent to four fifths? This type of problem is a multi-select problem, meaning that there could be more than one correct answer. And we must find all the correct answers in order to get the point. So let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna use my arrow method again to prove that they are equivalent. So this is gonna be the faster way to do this. So I'm gonna take four fifths, and I'm gonna set them equal to each fraction. So first, four fifths, let's see if it's equal to nine twelfths. Five times nine is 45. 12 times four is 48. Is 48 equal to 45? Nope, that's wrong. Let's try four fifths, seeing if it's equal to six eighths. Five times six is 30. Eight times four is 32. Is 32 equal to 30? No. Okay, let's try four fifths and five fourths. A lot of kids would choose five fourths just because they flipped the fraction but use mathematics to see if it's right. I'll just go picking stuff just because. Five times five is 25. Four times four is 16. Is 16 equal to 25? No. No. Are any of these correct? Gotta be. Four fifths. See if that's equal to 80 one hundredths. Oh my gosh, this is a big one. Five times 80. Five times eight is 40, with that zero, 400. 100 times four is 400. Is 400 equal to 400? Yes! Woo! That's right. Okay, let's check eight tenths. I'll do it up here. Four fifths equal to eight tenths. Five times eight, 40. 10 times four, 40. Is 40 equal to 40? Yes, it is. So E and D are the answers. Okay, match the visual model with the correct equivalent fraction. These are our visual models. We have a number line, we have an area model, and we have a circle. It's another kind of area model. Um, and then over here we have 4 twelfths, 2 thirds, 1 half. Let's do this. So I need to see if they're equal, if they're equivalent. So what I'm gonna do first is determine the fractions of these visual models. So between zero and one, let's figure out the fraction going on. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six hops total. So my denominator is going to be six and I'm considering this shaded part right here. So one, two, three, four. Four, six for this fraction. Over here, let's figure out our denominator. We've got six here plus six here, which would be 12, and six are shaded. And then on the circle fraction, we have three parts and only one is shaded. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's see which is equal. So right away, I'm seeing this one half, okay? And this right here, I can tell that half of it is shaded. It looks like it's going right down the middle. So I'm gonna check to see if 6 twelfths is equivalent to one half using my little cross multiplication arrow method. 
12 times 1 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. Yes, they are equivalent, so put a checkaroni right there. Um, on the test, they might make this like an answer that you have to circle in, so you would just circle that. Okay. Um, all right, now, hmm. I see that this is one third, and I know that one third is not equivalent to two thirds because two thirds would be greater. That would be this part shaded in. So I'm going to test to see if one third is equivalent to four twelfths, the other one. Three times four is twelve. Twelve times one is twelve. Are they equivalent? Yes, because twelve equals twelve. That was one third, four twelfths. All right, so I'm guessing that four six would be equivalent to two thirds. So should I just check it? Should I put a check mark or should I work it out? You're right, you gotta work it out. Now work it out. So see if four six is equivalent to two thirds. Six times two is two twelve. Four for two times, I'm sorry, three times four is 12 is 12 equal to 12? Yes, it is. Put a check there. Joshua claims that one third is equivalent to three twelfths because he said that he multiplied three on the top times three on the bottom to get one times three is three and three times three is 12. That's what he said. Do you agree with Joshua's claim? A claim is just a statement that you're making explain your reasoning. Sorry, little brother, but I don't agree with you. And here's where it's wrong. You probably already figured it out. Yes, little brother, you multiplied one times three equals three, but three times three is three, six, nine, not 12. So do I agree with you? No, I do not agree with Joshua's claim, period. Don't leave it hanging there. You won't get it right if you just put this in there because you didn't explain why. But let me do that. In the denominator, Three times three equals nine, not 12. So it should be three ninths. Before you go and watch another video, let me leave you with this motivational message. This one comes from, I think it's Og Mandino. I don't know how to say it, but I like what you have to say, Og. Or Og. OG. Always do your best. What you plant now, you will harvest later. So let's think about it. Are you planting? Are you a gardener? No, but let's think about what planters do. They take a seed, they put it into soil, and they trust that if they do the right thing with the seed, eventually it's gonna produce an amazing plant, a tree, a fruit tree, with just a little bit of seed, okay? They harvest it later. Planters, gardeners have to be patient and just trust in the process. If you do your best, if you always do your best and you always give it your best, you're not gonna see it right away. You're not gonna see what it produces right away, but eventually you will, you will harvest it later.